hi everyone welcome back to Yellow Cottage Soapery I am going to be making a soap using a fragrance called Fresh Fruit Slices from Nature's Garden and based on that uh, I chose my colors they're all kind of fruity colors but then after I mix them I'm like oh it looks like a rainbow um, I'm using Pot of Gold from Mad Oils I'm using Grape ne Nehi from Mad Oils. I'm using Really Red Mica from Nurture Soap. Um, Apple Green Mica from Nurture Soap. And Tangerine Dream from Mad Oils. And my design is going to be based on <clears throat> a soap I did for a challenge for, um, I think it was last spring I entered, and it was... Uh, Amy with Great Cake Soap Works does a uh, really cool challenge club and it was my first time I ever entered and I made it was you're supposed to do a DNA helix swirl on the top of a soap and I ended up swirling it a little bit different kind of the opposite way that I was supposed to and it kind of came out like well it did come out like this I don't know if you guys can see that good on there, um, but you can see it's kind of like flower, like an iris, sort of. And I won the um, Sponsor's, Cho or, yeah, Sponsor's Choice Award that um, for that challenge, and so I thought I would try to recreate that design, not the same colors, but the design, I've looked at my picture and tried and tried to remember exactly how I did it because silly me, I didn't write it down. And even if I had tried to write it down after the fact, I couldn't remember what exactly I did that made it different. So <clears throat> I think I may have figured it out. So I'll show you more about how the swirling goes when I get to that part. But right now, um, we're going to go ahead and get started. We're going to get everything mixed up and the, the colors poured. I did pre-mix my colors because I need it to stay kind of fluid. And this design is just on the top of the soap. So I think I'll probably just do some, I don't know, I don't know what kind of pour I'll do. But I'll figure it out when I get to that point. So let's go ahead and get started.
stop the camera for a quick second so I could take a picture. Doesn't that look awesome? Oh my gosh, it makes me not want to do anything different to it and just leave it, but... Alright, I'm going to leave the inside. I'm not going to do any swirling or anything. I am going to go ahead and just lay white over the top of this. I may end up cutting this differently than I originally planned. Just because I think the inside is going to be so cool. What happened was um, it didn't go like a, you know, you do a pour in the corner of your mold. What happened was my all my colors were a lighter trace than my white because I the white thickened from the titanium dioxide that I stick blended in. So the it made the colors run and are so cool because they were a little more fluid than the white. So every time I poured the white in they kind of ran a different way and I was like, oh my gosh, this is so cool. And I knew right away why why it did that. Boy, this smells so good. Yummy. Okay, so now here is the part that gets a little bit trickier when you're doing this. I drew a diagram, of course I did, but it doesn't mean anything to you guys, but it does to me. Because when I did, I did this in a different mold last time. You're supposed to do it in a slab mold. I did it in a log mold so my design wasn't as large which I wish I had after I did the design because I was like, oh, this would have been so cool if it was on a slab. So what you do next is, and my colors are starting to thicken a little, so I'm going to talk while I do it if I can. I don't usually like to do two things at once, but um, a lot of times you can use a squeeze bottle and it helps you make these lines more accurate, but me and squirt bottles we don't get along very well because then you got to clean them and they're a really big pain. All right, so you're supposed to do a thinner line with a squirt bottle, but what I, I remember doing a thicker line like this, and I'm just going to, well, I kind of want them to be, I'm just going to go in order of the color right across. And I think when other people were doing it in the slab mold, they were doing um, they were doing it perhaps the long way. Either way, um, I will show you when I get to that part. Right now, I'm just going to kind of concentrate on this so I can get them in here before they get too thick. But then I'll show you before I do the swirl what I'm talking about.
all my colors poured the shorter way in the mold. I suppose you could do this either way you wanted to as far as which way you pour. It's the swirl part that, that matters. Um, so what I do now is, let me just think because I know what exactly I'm doing. Okay, so this is all the colors. All right, then I take it and you're just going to just do the top layers. and go back and forth Okay. Oh, that looks so pretty. I almost don't want to do anything to it. But, okay, so now that you've got that going, when you do the DNA helix swirl, you're supposed to go in the same direction that you just did this. In other words, you would go... Um, I'm trying to look at my diagram so I can make sure I'm doing it the right way. Let me put it this way, the way the diagram goes. Okay, so we went back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Now you would go and the same way that you just did that, you would do a helix design. Um, you would go this way, like that, if you're doing the DNA helix. You do like an hourglass. Don't do that. Um, and that would make the helix design. But what I did when I did it is I go back and forth like this, and then I did the hourglass this way, which made the flower shape, I think. All right, let's try and see. Okay, you see like the flower right here? Let me pick it up. Alright, let's see. You see how like it, this is like a flower kind of? I think I might I think I might do that one more time over top of that to make it more defined. But when you do the DNA helix one, it looks more like, you know, like a DNA type. If you look up pictures of that, so the swirl is different. Alright, I'm going to put glitter on it and then I'm not going to touch it because I could sit here and keep playing with it and I don't want to do that. But I love it. I love the colors. They're vivid and gorgeous. So excited. Okay, here it is. And I'm not sure what I'm going to name it yet. But I will be back tomorrow to show you the cut. Thanks for watching. 
everyone, welcome back to Yellow Cottage Soapery, and today I'm cutting my um, soap I made yesterday, I don't have a name yet, and I was trying to figure out the best way to cut it. It weighs the whole thing, there's two, I cut this in two even pieces, but the whole thing weighed about 72 ounces, so if I cut it into 12 pieces, they'll be about 6 ounces each. So... I'm dying to use my log splitter, but I'm going to wait till I make a bigger batch, I think. So I just kind of measured and cut this at about four and a half. It's a little over nine long, so it's not going to be exact. So they're going to be, I kind of wanted to cut it this way so I could see the pattern inside. Hmm. I don't know if I should have done it the way I did it. I should have cut it in threes, maybe. Um, I don't know. Right now, I'm going to try to decide if I'm going to go this way. I might have more bars, but they may be a little bit smaller, I'm thinking. I thought I had this figured out before I turned the camera on. Um, Oh, that's just very not what I expected. Hmm. Okay, well. I may not cut the rest like that. I was hoping for more color inside. can see the top I don't know what I think I did get a little bit of soda ash on them that I probably steam off all right well I'm gonna go ahead and cut this one the same this one definitely isn't going to be as pretty because it doesn't have the top on it. The sides are kind of cool, but... Alright, let's see. I'm going to cut this one differently. Cut this one... If I cut it this way, it's still going to give me the weird way I have it. 
I think I'm going to just cut this into fours. And it's not going to be exact. I may end up just giving these for samples. I really just wanted to try the technique again. But I was really excited about the inside. And then it just isn't as colorful as I was hoping. Let's see. Those would be honking bars if I do that. I'm just eyeballing it. I don't know. This this size bar actually I've made some this shape before. Um and they're kind of nice because they fit in your hand really well. You know, they're like, and then the edges get rounded, so they, they just seem to fit in your hand really well. This side's pretty. Okay, guys, I just wanted to give you an idea of what they look like. And thanks for watching. I will see you on the next video.